Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Mishpokha. Welcome to another edition of Ray Bash's Ramblings, where I'm going to uh, tackle uh, kind of a, a hot topic about, um, you know, is, is the word rabbi, is rabbi a four-letter word? Is rabbi a dirty word? Uh, let me read to you what it says in uh, Matthew 23, 8 through 12. It says, and this is the words of Yeshua, Messiah, but be, uh, but be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Messiah, and all ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be called masters, for one is your master, even Messiah. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever shall exalt himself uh, shall be abased, but he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. I can't tell you how many times I've been quoted this by well-meaning and well-intended uh, Messianic believers saying, oh, well, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have that title rabbi. You shouldn't be called rabbi. Well, I don't make anybody call me rabbi. If somebody chooses not to call me a rabbi, no skin off my back. I, I, I can care less. It's not a big deal. But at the same time, rabbi is not a four-letter word. When you're reading the scriptures, especially the words of Messiah Yeshua, you've got to put yourself, put your mind in a Hebraic mindset and understand how uh, Jews taught during that time era that Yeshua walked the earth. There's something in, in, in literature that's called, um, you know, allegories, euphem euphemisms, and idioms. And if we were to take every single thing that Yeshua said literally, like such as this passage, and let's deal with some other passages that people, uh, you know, sometimes take literally. You know, think of Matthew 5, uh, 30. It says, if your right hand offend thee, cut it off, cast it from thee. For if it is profitable that... Um, that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body shall be cast into hell. Matthew 18, 8. Wherefore, if thy hand or foot offend thee, cut it off. You know, what if we were to take that literally? We would be digitless and, and, and uh, uh, limbless. You know, if we took those passages literally every time that our hand offended us, or if we did something wrong with our hands or feet, you know, y Yeshua was not saying these words in a literal a literal manner. Um, you know, he was he was pointing out he was trying to make the point, and he's still trying to make the point, of, of one of humility. The passage where it says, call no man rabbi or father, that is an issue of humility. Um, where, where the person who has the title of rabbi and father shouldn't be desirous of that title. Oh, I want you to call me rabbi. I want you to call me father. You know, it's, it's not that. It's, it's one should have a hum, uh, uh, an uh, attitude of a servant leader, of being uh, humble just as Messiah was. When he went down on his hands and knees and performed the act of a servant by washing the feet of a Talmudin. Um, because back in the day, the word rabbi the word father, they were terms of endearment. When a rabbi took Talmudin unto him, even in Yeshua's day, it was a father-son type relationship. And it wasn't uncommon at all for, for a student to call his rabbi father, or you know, to call his rabbi rabbi. You know, it was, ter it was a term of respect and a term of endearment. What Yeshua was trying to bring across in this passage is one of humility. Don't get a big head. Uh, because you're a rabbi. Don't be demanded that you be called rabbi or demand that you be called father because that's not the point of it. Because what is what does it say in James 3 1? My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that ye shall receive a greater condemnation. Uh, those who are called rabbi, those who are, you know, who are called by those titles have a great responsibility, have great power and authority. Therefore, they're responsible for what they say and do and will receive a greater condemnation if they screw up. And that's kind of what, uh, you know, what it was talking about. You, you even see in the Tanakh where Elisha uh, calls Elijah father. Um, it was the same type of, of relationship as a rabbi and a Talmudin, a rabbi and a student. Um, you know, it was a father-son type relationship. Uh, that's how close and how loyal students were to their teachers back at, back at that time and back in those days. And also Yeshua also was obviously trying to bring across the point that there is an ultimate rabbi, a Rebbe, and that is Yeshua himself. Um, and, and there is an ultimate father, and that father is God. In other words, we aren't to put um, you know, a rabbi who was sometimes called father on such a high pedestal that he, that he has the status of Messiah uh, or the status of God or put in such a, a high position because, you know, uh, the bigger they are, the harder they fall, you know. 
uh, the higher you climb, the, the, the harder uh, and, and the farther the fall is going to be. And oh, how great will be that fall. So those were the, you know, that's, that's what Messiah Yeshua was trying to get across when he said those words. Uh, people also ask, well, what about, you know, uh, what about the gifts of the Spirit? What about, um, you know, what about Rav Shaul, you know, where he gives the fivefold ministry of apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist? How come the, the word rabbi isn't in there? You know why? Because an apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist is the job description of a rabbi. It's what a rabbi should be. A rabbi should be an apostle, he, which means a sent one, a sheliot. He should be one sent out, one called. Uh, apostle, prophet, you know, he should be he should be able to work in the Ruach HaKodesh in the prophetic, not saying predict a future or whatever, but understand uh, his, his people, his flock, um, understand their needs and be able to give a prophetic word to them, you know, that, that reads their mail, that hits them right on the level, prophet, uh, apostle, prophet, pastor, a pastor is one who, who leads, it's, it's uh, closely related to the word shepherd, uh, where you, you care for and feed uh, the, the people, the, sh the sheep, apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher. Oh, you have to be able to teach. You have to be able to teach to where your students can understand it, and it's on an applicable level. An evangelist, we should always be ready uh, to be able to go wherever God tells us to, and in, in any and every situation, be able to give the hope, the reason for the hope that we have within us. Uh, so we're, you know, a rabbi is supposed to encapsulate uh, uh, is supposed to live out and, and operate in the fivefold ministry of apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist. So, you know, not everyone is called to be an apostle. Not everyone is called to be a teacher. In other words, not everyone is called to be a rabbi. You know, other lay people may have uh, one or more of these gifts, but a rabbi should have all five. So, um, you know, hopefully this clears up uh, the issue of, of um, is, is rabbi a dirty word and, and should we use it today? No, I'm probably going to get a lot of people who disagree with me. That's okay. We can agree to disagree agreeably. Uh, you know, but uh, I think the point of the matter of that passage of Scripture was one dealing with uh, how it is, 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 is pertinent and necessary and needful for a leader to have a servant heart, uh, to, to have that spirit of humility um, and not demand that people call him by his title. I think that was the point that Yeshua was making in that passage. So uh, tune in again next time. We'll talk to you later. Shalom and Shavuot Tov, Mishpokah. See ya. Bye.